I just thought I'd uh, show you my fantastically, <clears throat> uh, what word is, adjustable work space. We've got uh, this, this thing here. Uh, <clears throat> This is probably one of the only few things, apart from my lovely children, this is my one of the few things I've brought out of my marriage, previous marriage, attached to this lump of wood at the time. And it's it's just a great big one ton vice. <coughs> um, and it stayed on this piece of wood. And instead of bolting it to anything, I've bolted the fret press to the other end. And the two things together are so unfeasibly heavy um, that it just allows me to prop them up, uh, move them around, and they're just they're just really rock solid. Now I can just leave that standing there. If I really want to, I can clamp it down on the other side, but it doesn't need it. It's, uh, it weighs a ton, um, and so I can get myself in the mood for uh, pressing frets onto this beautiful Marlin Sidewinder neck. And I've got my, actually, I've got my. Uh, my strip of frets ready cut. Um, it's dead handy. I put them on. It's like a machine gun belt, but only uh, peaceful and non-violent. So there it is. It's a guitar belt, and all the frets laid out in order, so that when I come to put them on the neck, they're in order. And I need some hot water and towels, like in the old movies when you're giving birth to something, someone. Uh, and so that's going to be sitting over, get a few more things out of the way that aren't necessary for this job. That's going to be sitting over here. I also then have a tea towel that's going to get <clears throat> wetted up and a couple of spongy things which are just going to be on hand for cleaning up. Um, just thought you might like to see, these are just amazing, <laughs> the old pickups. Uh, I, I, I'm going to try and reuse these sometime with some decent wiring, see if, they're, if they've got any interesting tone. But for now, the, 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 the electrics connecting all this up was so bad, uh, the whole lot was microphonic. <clears throat> so I'm going to replace it all with some sort of decent quality things. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm going to chuck those Sidewinder components away because I, I, I'm going on the basis that, like my old Squire, Japanese Squire strap. When I put some new electrics and a new capacitor and stuff into that guitar, it, it was like a brand new instrument. So I'm going to, before I throw those beautiful looking old Sidewinder parts away, or consign them to the, maybe I'll use them one day, possibly maybe scrap heap. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get uh, one of those quality wiring kits <clears throat> or the components thereof um, and I'm going to try them out in something with decent wiring and see what we get. So tea towel goes into the container of water, completely soaked, it's going to go cold and horrible but completely soaked and out it comes wet and hang, hangs up over the clamps here ready. Wet one here a couple of wet ones there to soak up glue. <coughs> this is a 12 inch radius. Um, this is going to be filled with a tight bond glue, which I will do in a minute. Uh, I need a couple of things. One is I need a plastic scraper, which is a bit of old credit card. And then I need my 12 inch radius insert and I need the one before that which will be a 9.5 sort of over tighten it and then I need my little oh you can't see sorry my little velcro on the side allen key that fits for the purpose and I also need the uh, neck call thing for supporting the neck and this supports the neck most of the way until we get to the heel and then we just have to improvise at the heel part but it's not too difficult so this will go into the press comme ça, and we'll squeeze down and then we'll use our wet cloths to wipe up. One thing I haven't done on this, which I'm just going to do now, is I'm going to check the depth of the, what are those things called? 
the slots. Um, I'm a bit short on blades in here for some reason. So I just want to make sure that these slots are clean and free of gunge. So first thing I'm going to do, there's a little seal down here and I'm going to try and avoid breaking that because it's a kind of lacquered finish. There's no point in making myself have to redo it. So what I'm just doing is checking, make sure there's no gunge. And it's quite clean already. Um, but I'm just checking for obstructions because if there are any obstructions in the slots, whether it's a chip of wood or a bit of hard glue or anything, it's going to mess up getting the frets to seat nicely. Um, so a bit of time checking it through now. Not all of the edges are sealed. One or two of them have broken in the past, but I don't want to have to go and sort of fill them all again. Now I've undercut the tangs so that we miss the last millimetre or so of each slot so that hopefully we'll just get them to sit in nicely without coming into contact with any of the build up of gunge at the end. Now these feel pretty good and I think judging by, I'm not measuring anything, I'm doing it by eye, but judging by eye and by experience these new frets will fit comfortably into there. Um, and I'll just do one first to show you how it goes. So we get ourselves some glue into the whole thing. And I just want it, I'm going to just let it dribble down to the bottom. It's going to come out the end a bit. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to try and let it build up. The problem with this if there is a problem, is that we're going to get air stuck in here, whatever happens. Um, and as soon as I put the plunger in, that air has got to find its way out. So it's going to be a bit of kind of a game of letting it sort of try to escape partially so we can get an, a passage of air through the top there. And then we put the plunger in and we now have to let it kind of sit upside down we can hopefully find the air and there's the air squirting out and once the, all the air is out as it does then I'll back off because we're at the glue stage so having this pad here is really handy just to continually soak up loose, loose glue and in fact a couple of these sponges is really dead useful now um, before I go anywhere I'm going to put in first of all I'm going to put in the uh, what am I going to do which way around am I going to do now I'm going to do the over tightened one first, so I'll put the 9.5 in. Now these frets that I've cut, or the, the radius I've cut the frets to is slightly tighter than 12 anyway, so, so they're going to try and sit tighter at the ends, or they're going to grip the ends more than the middle. So I'm going to use the, a matching radius of 9.5 to squeeze down, basically put more pressure on the ends first, and then I'm going to go in do it again with the 12 and flatten it out so that it's it's at its correct radius. It's uh, again something that's just done by experience seems to work. So first of all I just slather some glue into the slot and everywhere else. This is where the wet cloth comes very much in handy and I'm ready from the outset to wipe excess glue off. So first game is to just get some glue into the slot and it's quite it's not as easy as it looks because you've got air in the slot <clears throat> and the air has to be able to escape for glue to get in there so you need to sort of do a bit of waggling backwards and forwards once you think you've got some uh, glue in there then you take your surface your plastic surface and scrape off the bulk of it now I'm going to take the first fret off my list and I'm gonna I'm gonna aim and I'll just double check it. What I want is there to be not so much tang. Uh, so if I need to trim the tang, I'm gonna do it at this point. I'm gonna take a, just a little tiny bit. You don't need a huge amount of tang to keep this thing in in place. Um, and if you need a bit less tang, now's a good time to kind of snip that extra overhang if you need it. 
and that just makes sure that the part of the tang that's in there clears the edges quite nicely. So I'm going to position that on there and that's nicely positioned. Now I'm going to take it over to the press, support it nicely and I'm going to very very gently and if we can caught out with this before this is all too easy to make uh, an impression on the neck even at this point with the, the bare uh, call or insert sorry so I'm going to just line it up and I'm going to press the fret home nice firm squeeze was it back to here where you can see and so the frets in and I'm going to now take off as much of the excess glue as I can possibly take off. Um, it's funnily enough, uh, a lacquered maple board in some ways is a bit more forgiving than uh, a rosewood. A rosewood can soak up the glue really quickly, whereas here it gives me a, a little tiny bit more time to uh, clean up, which is nice. But because it's um, lacquered and nice and shiny, you also want to make sure that you've got every bit of excess glue along the way so that it doesn't at any point end up dulling the uh, lacquer. You can get the, the shine back but it's going to take time and you're working between frets which is always fiddly. So I've changed the insert here over to the 12 um, and just, just eyeballing it that's sitting really well on the fingerboard but I'm now going to just give it a sort of a flattening press with the, with the 12 inch which is the correct radius um, and I'm just going to give it one more squeeze and you, you can see the neck flexing when you do this so you don't want to ram so much force into it that it breaks and again we will just use the wet cloth to whisk down the sides and take away any excess material or glue is what I'm looking for the word um, so there we have it and then if we want to we can dry off now what I sometimes do and I will do with this one but uh, not on this very first fret the thing to do is just look at it now how is this looking that's beautifully seated um, it's a perfect fit so the 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 start radius that I've cut the, um, the frets to is good it works well with the two presses that I'm doing. What I'd probably do now <coughs> is I'd get my 12 inch block. Now, some people have made comments about this. This 12 inch block, it has several functions. Okay, it's a, it's, um, it's a radius block. So its primary purpose is to put some sandpaper on it and I can either level frets or I can radius the fingerboard if I want to. Obviously, I don't want to do it on a maple one because I'd have to relacquer it. But it allows its 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 purpose is to shape something to a nice, um, predictable radius. I also use it as a clamp, so you can see that I can put a load of frets in and then clamp them to make sure they dry in situ. Some people are worried that it makes um, presses little lines into here, and it actually it does. <coughs> Excuse me. But it isn't a problem because it still retains its radius in this direction and it's used in this direction. So a few little indentations here don't have any impact on its radius in this direction. It's still a 12 inch radius by and large. Now, if you did it so many times over the years that it impressed millions of little straight, uh, millions of little impressions in, then what you'd still have is a 12 inch radius, only slightly compressed. Um, so it's not a problem, don't get freaked out. Where if you do this, you can do it, and if somebody if somebody sees you doing it and says, "Oh no, you can't possibly do that," because well, you can. It's one of those things. Think about it. Think it through. There's no danger. Um, there is a danger that this sandpaper here will slightly um, mark your fret surfaces, but you're going to. Well, I'm going to re-level these frets once I've glued them in place anyway. So I don't mind scratching the surface of the frets. What I don't want to do is scratch the fingerboard. There's a Morris under the shed. So what I'm, the reason I brought this out just a second is I'm just going to see how many frets I can do in a go and clamp. So um, I'm going to now mark my end point and I'm going to do these one, two, three, four, five, six more frets in a go um, in sort of production line frenzy. 
and that's going to be a whole series of clamps and clamp and goes. There are little air bubbles coming out there. Morris chooses this moment to make an appearance, but um, it is possible to, to do this quite quickly. But I love this process, I tell you. Fretting is my favourite thing. It's, it's the, it's a sort of, I don't know what the word is. What are you eating? <laughs> I'm now paranoid that there'll be sweets in your pocket if I look. If I search you, I'm going to turn out sweets, aren't I? From the tuck shop. Um, yeah, fretting is, is, I've said this loads of times, but it's so tangible. And when you have an old neck like this Marlin neck, which I think is a beautiful thing, and like some people on my um, Real Love Guitars Facebook page have already commented that, uh, you know, the, the the frets that came off this thing were so unbelievably worn out, but beautifully worn out in in the in the sense that you know the, the amount of playing that that thing had done was just uh, hard to believe. Um, it, it's a sort of a beauty in itself how much it had been played, um, and just checking this tang width. That's fine. Um, yeah, so to to. To be able to refret that and, and put these fabulously big new jumbo frets into a, into this neck and bring it back to life and also give it a new lease of life. It's already it's already been kind of fully active, um, but give it this new lease of life for another who knows 25 years or more. Um, it's just a wonderful thing to do, and it is so incredibly satisfying to play a guitar that you've refretted yourself. I can't tell you how much, well I can tell you how much I enjoy it. It's one of those, it's one of the things I could do this bit all day long. It's that good. Um, and and to, to be able to sell a guitar that's that's been refretted or give it back, give an owner's guitar back that's been refretted is, is a, a sheer joy. Okay, so having lined up my six frets, I'm now going to give them all a quick, um, quick press. And this is the over radius, so 9.5 inch. And I just want to seat them all first. In you go, lovely. There's going to be glue everywhere at this point. In you go, lovely. In you go, ah, delicious. In you go. Now that one went off sideways, but it's gone in, finally. Okay, don't have to put loads of force into this, they sit down beautifully. Now's the time to get all of that excess glue off to begin with. We don't, I mustn't forget the sides. This is why the wet tea towel is a real must at this point because you just need to be able to continually get a wet cloth onto there and that's the way you're going to avoid getting any permanent sort of glue stick um, but you, obviously the glue is still underneath the, uh, the kind of edge of the fret which is what we want. Now I don't need to tidy up too much at this point because I'm, I'm going to re-squeeze re these but I do want to take care of these end bits if I can because the glue comes out the end. It's, um, it's quite difficult to get to and you just want to be careful you don't hook the end of the fret and pull the fret out again, it sort of defeats the object. Um, so it's just to kind of clean up. There's probably other ways you could do it, Q-tip, I don't know. Cotton buds, that's what they're called. I think, I don't know why, for some, you know, there's some strange reason. When I first referred to cotton buds, I was probably a brief time in my life when I was living in America. And I've always called them Q-tips, which is not the correct name. They're never known as that here. Okay, so I've just put the 12-inch radius back onto here for the proper, the proper big squeeze, for the correct radius squeeze. And again, I'm always conscious of where the neck is sitting. So right down at this point, you can give quite a good solid squeeze because everything is the, the load is all taken by the call. Um, 
up here and at the other end you start to introduce too much bend into it and you've got to be very careful not to over pressure it because you can splinter your neck if you do that. So I'm just careful at the other end. So there we have all of them um, seated nicely and again they're going to go down each edge. This is the bit that will look so great if it's tidy, if it's gluey and gummy it looks crappy um, but if you get this right on lacquer and uh, particularly it looks very clean when you've got your brand new frets shining against uh, nice shiny lacquer. So it's worth taking the time and again pay attention to the ends where the excess has come out um, even if it you know, takes a few passes to get it right. The thing is with this is keep it wet that's the secret. The moment all of this dries you're in trouble but so long as your your cloth is wet and you're keeping the lacquer underneath wet you'll get the glue off no problem at all. Some of this glue will come off as well when you <coughs> what's the word uh, when you file away the ends of the uh, the frets so any sort of glue caught up right in the ends will come away at that point. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just clean off the fingerboard so while I'm clamping these I don't want any glue setting on the fingerboard so I'm just going to make sure with the dry tissue that there's none sitting on there. Um, <clears throat> having done that now I'm ready to clamp it and I know that these will this call no, whatever it is, block, radius block will cover all six. So I'm just going to position it as cleanly as I can, make sure that the neck is sitting nicely. And I've got some <coughs> amazing new clamps, which uh, feel like massive overkill for this, but I'm not going to over pressure it. But just keep this thing in position and then. Even though these, these clamps are technically sort of strength overkill, there's no harm in uh, having mega big clamps for this job, just because they're so much easier to use than little fiddly fake ones. So you don't have to squeeze them massively hard, but um, I, I've learned that the toy clamps uh, in the end don't pay off. So there we go beautifully clamped. This now can sit for a few hours, I can go and take care of something else and when I take this off these frets are kind of beginning their next 30 years of life in this fabulous old guitar. Um, and it's as simple or as fun as that and I might give this three, I'll give this as long as I have discipline or, or willpower because I'm so keen to get on with the next bit, but the longer the better in a way that this is clamped in place. Um, but maybe three or four hours, something like that. I'm going to distract myself with some other activities. But yeah, beautifully. Um, what I should do is I should have a hook where I can hook this out of the way now. Ooh, that would be simple, wouldn't it? Just lift it up out of the way. Oh, I should have been born on a yacht using space. All right, see you a bit later for the next bit.